Hello everybody, this is Manny from Low Tech, and today we're going to be looking at the Pocket Go S30 from BitBoy. This device has been available for about two months. It comes in at a $60 price tag. What makes this device unique is definitely the styling. Yes, it is very reminiscent of an SNES controller, and that was obviously on purpose. Today's video, we're going to go over the specs, then we're going to hop right into emulation. We're going to be testing multiple games on about eight different consoles. Once that's wrapped up, I'll give my final thoughts and review on the device and then we'll close the video out. So I hope you enjoy the video and if you do don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. The Pocket Go S30 specs are as follows. It has a 3.5 inch 480 by 320 IPS screen. The CPU is a quad core 1.2 gigahertz all winner A33. The GPU is the Mali 400 MP2. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM. The storage is external micro SD card and it has a 26 milliamp hour battery. One thing that stood out to me right away with this console is it's very easy to use. Turn it on, you're immediately presented with an image of your, your console with the TV. And you can scroll through, see the console you want, select it, you're given a list of games, select that, and you're off and running. There's not a lot of access to settings. The settings menu is very basic. You Basically your language, brightness, and that's about it. Um, depending on the console you are emulating, you will have additional settings that you can adjust. EPS, SPP is the big one that stands out here. One thing you definitely want to keep in mind with this device, especially if you're considering purchasing it, is that it's not as powerful as some other devices on the market. The RG351P, the Retroid Pocket 2, these devices have a more powerful CPU, they have more RAM, so keep that in mind when you have expectations for this device. The device is $60 versus $100. So I remember there's a price difference there and it's for a reason. The internals aren't as powerful. You're not gonna get the same performance out of this that you will on those devices. But performance is still pretty impressive at this price point. And we're gonna see that as we start going through the easier to run stuff into the hardest to run stuff on this device. So we're gonna get into the emulation. Once that's done, we'll talk about how it performed and if it's worth the $60 price tag. I also want to make note that this device is 100% stock, no modifications have been done. So with that, let's get into some emulation testing.
So you're really coasting in emulation on this device. All the way up until PS1, which PS1 runs very well, actually. PSP, Dreamcast, and those two especially, you're going to run into stutters, slowdowns, and unplayable games in a lot of the games. Because those that's really reaching this device's limits when you get to those consoles. Anything older than those, you're going to have no problem with. And there's a lot more that I didn't show that is on here for older consoles. If PSP and Dreamcast were a big deal to you, maybe looking into the RG351P, that may be an option for you. It does run PSP and Dreamcast better. Not perfect, but better than this device. So that may be an option. $40 more if that's a big deal to you. But if it's not, then this device at $60 is a really good price for what you get with this device. And the, the numerous amount of consoles you can run. Uh, it's just endless and endless hours of playing retro games. If you load this up with all your favorite consoles and the games they have, it's endless fun. It's, it's a good console. The ergonomics are a little bit no, not comfortable. But if you're not going to play it for hours at a time casually this is a really good device. Personally though, I do prefer the RG351P. I like the feel better, the look better. More importantly, it has more powerful internals and there's a lot of different operating systems that you can flash to an SD card on those devices. The RK3326 devices beyond that all have that ability to be flashed with different OS's. There's a huge following behind them and there's a lot of different teams that work on these different builds all the time. So I prefer that device, but this device is good. It's simple, easy to use. If you're not familiar with emulation, this device is, is so, so I can't stress enough how easy it is to use. So if you're not familiar with all of that involved in emulation and the advanced settings and the tweaking and installing OSs and custom this, custom that, if that's not your thing, you just want something you can buy and turn on, this is the device for you. It does come with games pre-installed. The only thing you will have to do is add your own games on top of that if you want more than what's already on there. So the $60 price tag on this device I definitely think is worth it, especially since it has the ability to run some PSP and some Dreamcast and everything under that. I definitely think it's worth it. The screen is nice. It works. It's easy. Basic. I definitely suggest if you're interested in something like that to pick one of these up. On that note, I'm going to call this video a wrap. I hope that it was informative. I hope that it was enjoyable. I want to thank everyone for watching, and I hope that you all have a good day.